What is up my fellow net dwellers and today we are taking a look at the latest update to 7 days A20. This has not been officially released yet, it's currently sitting over an experimental, but you can download it and try it out. And this adds quite a bit to the game. And I have the official release on the thing and we're going to see if we can't see some stuff after I go through this. So things they've done is improve the random world generation, which I never really played world generation. I know a lot of you do, but it wasn't really for me. Adding a ton of new POIs and explorable locations to it. They've updated the NASA game map, which, hey, that's my map, so I'm happy there. We've got 25 new different character textures available to us in shaders. We've got six new weapons. Most importantly, though, we have pipe weapons. Anybody, anybody who's watched any of my content on 7 Days knows I rave about pipe weapons. I loved it in Darkness Falls. I loved it in Wasteland. We now have it in the base game. How awesome is that? On the flip side, I'm not sure how those mods are going to integrate with it now that this is just part of the normal game. They might use it. They might replace it. We'll see. All right, let's go ahead and actually take a look at the pipe guns real quick. Here's the pipe pistol. See, I'm not sure how I feel about this. I mean, a revolver, in all likelihood, would be an easier weapon to potentially make, but there's a little bit of precision work for that. For instance, I can't tell from the sides. Yeah, they've got the grooves. So basically how the revolver should work is there's those grooves that should help rotate the cylinder. So whenever you're moving the hammer back, cocking it, it should cause the cylinder to rotate to the next one if it's a double action. I mean, that's some jank to it. I like the feel that this thing is not a good gun. Like, let's... Look at that. He's having to force it open. He's hitting things to clear it. What I don't like... You see right there? It's like he's got stuff inside of his barrels. Like, there's dirt in those barrels. Also, it's got some weirdness. I don't know what this bolt on the back is supposed to be for. I mean, you can... S I would assume it's part of the hammer, but the hammer's down lower. If you look at, like, the hammer is probably about where the little icon is underneath the bolt versus the bolt itself. So I'm not sure what purpose that bolt up on top serves. But yeah, I mean, they basically took an old-fashioned Western gun. Uh, I think it was the Smith & Wesson that was the break and open during that time. And, you know, jankified it made some alterations and that's their pipe pistol it's cool i just don't know it feels like it requires a little i feel like the skills are a little too much for what you'd expect like this isn't somebody slapped together a pipe and a hammer and potentially some type of backer to stop it somebody actually built a cylinder which requires machining to be able to fully turn to fire the next round along with catches for popping it open and all that i mean jank but that still requires some high-level precision. What do we got here? Pipe shotgun. Am I going to like you a little better? I do like this one a little better. This one looks like it's just some standard, like, bathroom plumbing thrown together on this. Oh, yeah, I like that a lot better. Now that, that I 100% believe somebody could make in the apocalypse. Just look at that. Yeah. That's believable. Oh. And this is the new pump shotgun model. For reference, here's the old pump shotgun model. Revisit old pump shotgun model, new pump shotgun model. They, oof. Yeah. Kudos. That is... That is well done. We've got the pipe rifle. Uh, let's go ahead and switch the ammo out. Okay, I like that. It's very similar to the first one. So this one's a break open. It's a single shot. 
which is all believable. You could probably make that. All this stuff is far more believable than the pistol. Break open single shots, absolutely doable. I'm not sure how I feel about this new version of the hunting rifle. So the basic impression I'm getting from it, I'm not sure what gun this would be. So all this, uh, you see that little bit of railing, uh, the place with the grooves on the top and bottom, that's M-Lock. So basically what they're saying is somebody tapped and screwed the barrel with an M-Lock rail, because that's not... It would be very uncommon you see an M-Lock on any type of hunting rifle. Plus the position for it, where it's forward from the bolt, you also wouldn't see that very frequently. Just because, you know, whenever you're scoping in, and if you try to maintain that scope in position and you rack back your action there, you're going to smack your cheek with the bolt whenever it's coming back at you. Because you've got to be close, so you can't really maintain sight profile. Normally you have that actually sitting right back over the top of the bolt with most bolt action rifles. Which honestly, this guy here, this is a very good indication of a good old fashioned 30 out 6 bolt action rifle. That right there is exactly like your, I think it's a 1902 or a 1903 Springfield. Looks very, very similar to that as far as all that goes. The operation there, the fact you see those, uh, if you look up on top, you see those two screws, that's where you'd normally have your scope mounted. Now let's go back to the other one. This, I have no idea what this is. This doesn't even look like a modernized firearm to me. Partially because it looks like somebody took pieces of a rifle or a leftover rifle barrel in action and slapped it onto a new wood stock and fitted it in. Which I guess zombie apocalypse, you could say that's possible, but... That's another thing, right there. Look at the bolt. Look how that's attached. Basically, somebody took a screw and ran it into the bolt. So, were the old ones like a pristine version of the model 1903 Springfield? This one is somebody had a gun and they jury-rigged it together to make it functional again. Which I should have known whenever... That's a freaking cigarette lighter right there. That is a car cigarette lighter on the back end of this thing that they're using. This is a jury-rigged hunting rifle. This is actually considered a hunting rifle in this, isn't it? Yeah, that's the hunting rifle. So they're going a lot more with the whole improvised weapons theme based off of that. On the flip side, this right here is like a Mossberg pump action shotgun. You've got the freaking barrel shroud on there to keep you from burning your hands if you run it hot. Uh, that M lock up on top for this one is, or a utility rail is not that uncommon. Just like that side mounted uh, additional shell carrier. What do we got here? This right here is a lever action rifle. I can't really see enough of the gun to I'm trying to remember how to go into third person. So I'm not as hundred percent sure how I feel about this lever action. Like, my issue is, you don't see anything really moving. Also, that reload animation is not right either for a level action. Normally, the way lever actions work is you have a tube feed that's underneath the actual ejection port, and you'll load through there. Based off of how I'm seeing him do this, he's just reloading it through the ejection port, which is not accurate for a lever action. This is the pipe gun machine gun. That fire rate, very low, very believable. I'm trying to see where the shells are ejecting from on this thing. They're not ejecting. That magazine 
feels kind of far forward. Basically, where the magazine is, if we assume that that's the feed port, it comes straight up, right? So it's basically firing from like less than a six inch barrel on this thing. This thing's supposed to kind of look like an MP40, except for it's shooting, you know, I think the MP40 was a nine millimeter and this thing is shooting 7.62. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this gun. One, I don't have an injection port for the bullets. Like I'm not seeing an injection port on the gun. Which is probably why I don't see the actual bullets ejecting. Two, it kind of looks like they tried to go through the see-through mag style on this. I'm not 100% on that. Because I can't actually see... No, they've got sheet metal or metal siding on it. So it's not see-through. But yeah, I'm just not sure how I feel about this one. It feels like it's very far forward. Like you're cocking the gun from about... Five inches back. Like where the bullet's being fired from is up where the magazine meets. And where you're cocking the gun from is far, far back. That just feels very, very odd. I mean, it's definitely got the jank fill. I just don't know if they put jank in it to the point that it basically made it like it was a non-functional firearm type of deal. Here we got the new version of the AK. Apparently they're... Very big on this little uh, piggy skin, like evil pig. Just for comparison, new AK, I like a lot. Like that is a night and day improvement over the old AK. As far as the detail goes, all the guns that they've added to this have this very, 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 like heavily modified, heavily maintained, like it's been used for a long time and it is fallen apart and they replaced it with whatever they could. That is the feel that they're giving off with the majority of these weapons. Here we got the M60. And there's the old M60. Honestly, I feel like these two actually... I mean, it's a higher def model, but they kept a lot more true as far as this goes. So it looks like they primarily just changed the PNG. Oh, and they changed the sight profile. That's very different. Again... This whole update, they're going with a very much, like, all these game guns have been, they've had issues, they've had things break, they've had things fall off, they've had things destroyed and damaged. Like, I mean, if you look there, that front bayonet is held on by duct tape. The old version of it actually had the bayonet lug and was attached via it. That thing is just held on by duct tape. You've got the sight on the front here. That's not the normal sight. I mean, the normal sight... You can actually see here in this old one, that's the normal sight with your dial range. This guy here, somebody has broken that off basically and they've riveted a new thing in place to give it a sight profile. So I think all the guns in this game are just doing that very heavy wear filling. They overhauled the shape menu. And I always forget tabs my inventory in this thing. So here's our creative mode now, which is already a different feel than the old creative mode. Because over here, something I've learned from my experience doing a bunch of different mods, this is 19.6. So you'll notice they've switched the whole texture of all the creative mode here. But another thing you can note, right here you've got your specialty blocks where you can turn them into anything. And they now have a different texture look to it where they stand out. They're called Q blocks now. And you can basically pick your shapes from like normal and then you have your other blocks to the side. Come over here. We don't have those. Instead, you're going to have to just find... The Q block you can alter. Like I think these ones here are the Q box I can alter. Nope, those are just normal rebars. That's normal. Ah, here they are. So we still have the symbol that denotes the same. However, they're no longer quite the same.
So you got a frames cube. I don't even know what these look like. Let's take a look real quick what the frame cube looks like. So that's just a wooden frame. Oh, and look at all those shapes you got available now. Look at that. I mean, just to compare, let me go ahead and snag this cement block right now. Same deal. Let's check out our shapes. These are our options for 19.6. There's our options for 20. Just look at how much support that adds. Plate catting. You've got T's. You've got all these shapes. You can draw circles. I'm actually... Ooh. So, that's freaking awesome. Fan of that already. We've got improvements to the block placement. Another really cool thing, you can have a robotic drone companion to carry your extra gear. So, hey, you know, you got a robot slave until he decides to take over the world. This is the last thing I want to check out before I wrap up. Is this robotic drone it's that apparently... Woo! Nice, nice. I'm curious if this thing can actually get attacked. I want this to hit my drone, so I'm going to try to put my drone in between me and it. It doesn't appear to target my drone. Like, my drone is staying there, and it's only after me. Oh! Hello, new zombie model! Look at that guy. My senses have picked up something. Yeah, it doesn't appear like they want to go for the drone. Yeah. That's honestly it's very interesting. This thing How may I assist you? This thing's really cool. I don't know what it's going to take to make it, but the fact that you've just added an additional 5, 8, 16 slots to your inventory, and this guy just carries it for you. I mean, you don't get a quick use it, but whenever you've got, like, materials, you've been mining, you want to throw stuff on him, or, you know, you just want to carry around some spare stuff for repair or what have you, this guy's great. Dynamic imposter system renders accurate changes to POIs. That's kind of whatever. That just basically is a bunch of speech to say, hey, they're going to be able to render changes to POIs and pillage bases a lot sooner. Uh, we got some quest improvements, including a new quest type, which is the Restore Power at Night. We've got an AI improvement where they can now spawn better in cities. They're now capable of following the five Ds, you know, dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. As well as having some abilities to attack obstacles and... Do some head tracking. We'll see how that works out. This one's got me curious. The Feral Sense game options is sounds interesting. I'm not sure how that's going to play out. I would love to see some demos on that one. That one's going to be really cool, I think, or possibly nothing. Uh, they improved the vehicles for co-op players. We've got a new loot progression system with new loot stage systems based off of biome. So what biome you're in can affect what loot you're going to get. We've got improved animations. We've got a new dismemberment system, so we should be able to have certain zombies lose pieces of themselves, which I thought they already did. I swear I popped heads and arms. Maybe just heads. Either which way, we've got that now. Oh, that reload time. You definitely want to make that shot count. So heads still pop off. Looks like it can pop off his arm, too. But I swear you've always been able to take off their arms.
Uh, it's easier to do that with the shoddy normally. So you can pop off their arms, but I swear you've always been able to pop off arms and legs. I don't think they had anything there. They've improved Twitch integration with new commands, voting, and a lot more. So we've got a lot more streamer interaction available now. And they bumped the modding support, which anytime a release increases modding support, especially for a game like Seven Days, where the mod community is so huge, that's just a great thing. That is a basic breakdown of just some of, well, a couple of the visual things you can see, specifically the guns. I mean, I got sidetracked on the guns. I love guns. Either which way, guys, this was Couch Man. You guys all have a good night, a great tomorrow, an amazing rest of the week. I'll see you next time.